This location here is where the first uh, Red Bone concept was created. Uh, the Cajun vision of mine started right here like when I was about 17 years old, which is a long time ago. And uh, it used to be a nightclub here called the Peppermint Tree. And uh, our drummer at the time was Lolly and I, and a drummer by the name of Ed Green, who was played with Michael Jackson, uh, Jackson 5. And uh, we played here for about three years. There used to be lines outside the club like two and a half blocks long just waiting to get in every night packed. And uh, we started playing our Cajun music, you know, like uh, Dante Kalinda, Crazy Cajun, Nicky Hokey, uh, uh, you know, all our Cajun music that we had. And it started right here. This is the first location. I was 17 years old. By the way, by the way it's back. Um, but it was called a peppermint tree. This is the club where we went second right after uh, Peppermint Tree. Right here was a famous club called the Zaris. This is where it started. We started playing here. We played here for uh, three years. Solid. I mean, every celebrity in Hollywood, everyone, I mean, everyone, I don't care who it is, was here nightly dancing to our music and partying. They came to party and we would, there would be lines from here from this door all the way down that yellow sign we had to get in every night it was called Gazaris 1 now I'm going to take it to Gazaris 2 let's roll we opened for the famous Lenny Bruce the comedian that opened the door for Eddie, Eddie uh, Murphy, uh, for Richard Pryor. These guys were like students of, Eddie, of Lenny Bruce. He's the guy, first guy to come out and start saying, that motherfucker, you know, and that, that son of a bitch, and cursing. In the middle of his act, on, our, on the night, that we, op we opened for him for about a week, so for two weeks. Uh, when, when the police and the marshals and everybody got wind of where he was performing, they walked in in the middle of his show and arrested him and took him to jail in handcuffs. And uh, we had to finish the whole night by ourselves. And then he came back out of jail, they, uh, on bail, went back up on stage, started doing his act, and they arrested him again. This went on for about four or five nights. And uh, he was a great comedian, by the way, Lenny Bruce. He left a note. He left uh, one of his famous lines. Was, I left a note on the stairway in the basement of my home. He says, in case Jesus ever comes back, I want him to know I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the famous lines. Anyway, so, so if it wasn't for Lenny Bruce, there'd be no Richard Pryor, there'd be no, uh, no Eddie Murphy, there'd be no freedom of speech. But that was like, older as I was, 17 and a half, <laughs> no, 19, something like that. Anyway, but it was an experience and a half that I wouldn't trade for anything. Bohemian little side of town. A lot of uh, artsy, artsy, fartsy things, you know. And right here, right there, in this building here, was a club called the Prelude, where a lot of, we all and I used to play in between acts like, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Red Fox. It was the Red Fox. Red Fox used to perform. It was. It was then called. It was turned into the Red Fox nightclub. But before that, it was a prelude. We used to open for Red Fox, for Richard Pryor, 
for a, for a, a Paul Mooney, a lot of other people. And, and then we went on, moved on, down to Los Angeles. club back there called the Million Dollar Club, uh, where I started playing, you know, I, I, I needed the money, so I went and played with a guy by the name of, uh, uh, his name was, uh, Larry Bright, his name was Larry Bright, and Larry Bright had his drummer, he had a drummer with him, uh, he didn't know how to play rock and roll, he was a, he was a child prodigy played with Buddy Rich. At the age of six, he was touring with Buddy Rich across the country at six years old. He's a giant of a drummer. I taught him his first rock and roll beat, which was boom, cha, boom, boom, cha, boom, boom. And uh, that night, he played the entire gig on it with just that one beat. And later on, he later on he changed his name to, he was Gene Pellici at the time. Later on, he changed his name to Gene Pello who was one of the premier drummers of all time in rock and roll. He did all the Jackson 5 stuff, you know, One Bad Apple, all that, that incredible drumming, that's him. Gene Pello is his name. And he and I worked all these clubs together. Right there, right from there, I said, you're gonna come and play with me and my brother. So I, we stole him from uh, Larry Bright and we, we started making, having, we started rehearsing with him and, uh, and uh, he started playing all these clubs with us and we became very famous in, in LA. We were the highest paid trip with, trio in the country. I mean, really. We were making like uh, $2,500 a night, you know, for a trio. That's a lot of money at the time. Okay. Let's get Gino left us and went to uh, work for, for uh, uh, what was it, for, uh, uh, oh, The Temptations, right? He went to work with The Temps, so he took that job and he was going to make twice as much money. So I said, okay, cool. Then we hired a guy by the name of Mike Kowalski. If the name sounds familiar, it's because he's been with the Beach Boys for about 35 years. Uh, he left us and went to the Beach Boys, but anyway, he had, we... It was Mike Kowalski, myself, and Lolly. Used to play at a place right here around the corner. We started playing right here. It's called a Sea Witch. I'll show you what it is. It was called a Sea Witch. Right next door was a club called Dino's, which is Dean Martin's club. And uh, and it was right here. Right through that door right there. It was right through that. See that, that door right there, that loop, that round door? It was right there, the sea witch, right there. And right next to it, right here, was Dean Martin's show, which is not Tiffany. After the Gazaris, after I hired Van Halen at Gazaris, that was the first big gig. Then they moved on to the Whiskey Gogo for me, they took off. But right next door, I'm sure you where the London Fog was, okay? Right there was a group, a club called the Galaxy, right there. Well, film was the Galaxy, right there, okay? And right next door, right here, was the London Fog where the doors were, where they took off from. And we were in the Galaxy, there, playing there. And his famous uh, Roxy, 
is the famous Roxy right here. But we played two, we did some shows here. Look at this guy, look at this guy coming. Wow. presents Pat and Lolly Vegas. Boulevard. This is uh, the world famous Gazaris. We started uh, 
I hired such acts as the Doors here. I hired uh, Van Halen, uh, I can see the Turner, Moby Grape, Peter and the Wolves. For years, you know, I was here for seven years in this club, making tons of money for Bill Gazzari, the godfather of rock. And uh, we played six, seven, six nights a week. So many great acts that came through here, it's unbelievable. Jimi Hendrix, uh, uh, we worked with a guy by the name of Bumps Blackwell. Bumps Blackwell was a producer and a, and, a, and, a, and a great songwriter. He discovered such people as Sam Cooke. He produced uh, uh, Darling You Send Me for Sam Cooke and all his hits. He discovered Quincy Jones, who did all Michael Jackson stuff. He discovered Ray Charles. He discovered uh, Aretha Franklin, and he discovered Pat and Lolly Vegas. He brought us here to this club. Started giving it for us. Great man, great producer. Discovered Little Richard. On top of everything else. And, and, uh, Chuck Berry. All these people. And I'm proud to say he discovered me and my brother. And from there on, it's history. Big daddies in this club. <laughs> we ruled, okay? We owned the strip. We owned the street, man. But we had lines that went all the way around the block and up the hill, waiting to get in every night of the week. Everybody wanted to play here because it was packed with girls. I mean, here there were so many girls, it smelled like feet. You know? It was a Uh, it was 
Lowry and I and Mike Kowalski on drums, uh, who uh, later went on to join uh, the Beach Boys for about 30 years. And it was so, uh, that's what's happening here. Plus my bro is sitting back here. He dropped in a couple of times to see us too. And uh, I just have nothing but good memories back here. I hope to be in Europe with my new album soon. Uh, I'm almost sure and positive you're going to enjoy it. film it's okay it's not showbiz with with runners and uh, and, and you don't have a high high say high you don't have all these uh, fancy shit that you have with doing film in 
Hollywood. This is in Hollywood. This is handheld camera reality check. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. So come on, snap out of it. It's it's okay. Okay. It's, okay, it's okay. okay. So if you can't keep up, I become a blur. Okay. So remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a. It's like a.